I already had an inkling of probably not going to vaccinate my daughter um, from at least about 19 on. Oh god. Okay. Apparently there's an anti-vaccination YouTube channel out there. And all they do is bring in random people to come in and talk in front of a camera basically on their success after they have not been vaccinated or haven't been vaccinating their children. I'm going to go ahead and power through one of their videos right now. I learned that allopathic medicine treating symptoms was not helping me with my own medical problems. Well, the fact that you're calling it allopathic medicine right now is sort of giving me the idea that you are in favor of homeopathy or other kinds of alternate medicine. Plus, allopathic medicine is the mainstream treatment for many diseases for a reason. It's because it actually works. We have evidence that it actually works, and we can even explain why it works, unlike other forms of alternate medicine. I mean, what do you mean that allopathic medicine hasn't been working for you? So what did work for you? Homeopathy? Acupuncture? I mean, yeah, certainly the placebo has a large effect on our body's ability to recover from diseases. And you look like a woman who's already started off with a confirmation bias that allopathic medicine doesn't work. Therefore, the placebo effect really does affect you when you are using alternate medicine. And through many, many different MD visits versus holistic doctor visits versus using herbs versus using prescriptions, I learned for myself that I was better treated and healthier and felt much better going a more natural route. So by natural, I'm assuming you are using herbs and other things found in nature in order to treat yourself, or just simply not using allopathic medicine at all. But what is considered natural? You do realize that a lot of the drugs that we use to treat patients actually come from nature. Let's take type 1 diabetes for example. We need to synthesize both units of insulin in order to give to the patients. This is done by making prokaryotes do the work for us, since prokaryotes have the ability to rapidly produce proteins unlike eukaryotes. The proper DNA coding for insulin is injected and integrated into the bacterium. We then incubate and culture. After a period of time, we have both subunits of insulin being produced at rapid speeds. The insulin is then harvested, combined, and then administered to the patients. So tell me, what part of that is not natural to you? The DNA is just nucleotides that we find in all of nature. The protein synthesis process is also performed by all organisms. So why is that unnatural? Tell me. Or are you saying that unnatural represents anything that has been modified by humans? And now this is where I have to stress that even though we synthesize and produce drugs, proteins, and enzymes, that does not mean it has no effect in curing a patient. In science, and especially in medicine, please do not categorize things as natural or unnatural. It's awfully misleading. So when I got pregnant five years ago, I decided that I really needed to look into the vaccine issue because there was a lot of controversy surrounding it, and I wanted to make sure that I was completely educated before I made a decision one way or another. Your research is not really research. You have to read actual scientific papers and trusted articles. There are plenty of crazy batshit people out there that are against vaccinations. But if you look at a proper scientific journal, you will see that there is no doubt that vaccines have made our lives much better by being able to prevent diseases with little to no cost. It was a huge breakthrough when vaccinations became popular. We were able to eliminate certain diseases completely. Is that not enough for you to trust vaccines? My husband and I went on a little bit of a journey, um, reading a lot of books, reading a lot of articles, talking to various types of doctors. Any legit doctor out there is not going to tell you to turn away from vaccines. That's just ridiculous. And our friends to get a lot of different opinions on vaccines. And once I started doing the research, um, I started scratching my head. And I started getting a little nervous that what I had been told my whole life was actually not true. How did you make that conclusion? I would love to know how you concluded that vaccines are bad for you. What kind of articles were you reading? What kind of doctors were you speaking to? Since you are not educated in this topic, let me just give you a brief rundown on how vaccines work. In simple terms, we have a primary and a secondary immune response. The primary response occurs when we have an exposure to a pathogen for the first time. We detect the antigen, which are proteins on the surface of the invader, and produce an immune response from scratch. I could go into more detail, but it is not necessary to understand how vaccinations work. Basically, we produce B and T cells which fight off the pathogen. 
After the infection is gone, some B and T cells remain as memory cells. These cells stick around in case a second infection occurs with the same antigen. At this point, we will produce a secondary immune response. Since these cells are already present and do not need to start from scratch, the pathogen can be fought off much quicker and with greater power. This ultimately will prevent the onset of symptoms before we even know we're infected. And this is where vaccines come in. Vaccines are basically just weakened pathogens, or simply the antigen itself. After an injection, it causes your immune system to send out its primary response. Since the vaccines don't actually contain threatening pathogens, you cannot get infected with that particular disease. Essentially, we are tricking the body into producing the primary response. After the vaccination is over, the patient can now fight off the real disease in which the vaccination prepared for using the secondary immune response. And because this response is much quicker and stronger, it is highly unlikely the patient will be infected with the real disease after the vaccination, since very few diseases can bypass the secondary immune response. There are plenty of cases in which the primary response is simply not enough, for example, tetanus. We need our secondary response to fight the tetanus, not the primary response, because the primary response may not respond fast enough to fight off the infection. Now, of course there are risks involved with vaccinations, but these are little to nothing. The worst response you could possibly get is an autoimmune inflammation complication, which usually isn't too bad. Also, if you're thinking, Oh wait, Professor Stick, there's formaldehyde in the vaccines and it will react with your tissues. I will kindly ask you to go f yourself. There isn't nearly enough formaldehyde in vaccines to cause that much damage. Heck, your body even produces formaldehyde as a byproduct of DNA demethylation. You even poison yourself with formaldehyde drinking certain forms of alcohol. The small amount in vaccines isn't nearly enough to be a problem. Sorry I went off on a tangent there, I just wanted to say that so that people actually know that vaccines aren't dangerous. So after all of mine and my husband's extensive research on the subject of vaccination, we decided that it just simply was not safe enough to give our daughter 49 doses of 14 different vaccines before the age of six. It was extremely frightening, especially to know that you know, I only had maybe a handful of vaccines growing up and the schedule has basically tripled since I was a child. It was just too much and it was too unsafe and there were too many unknowns. There's too much controversy and too much risk for us to give vaccines to our child. What, you just said that you did tons of research and now you're telling me that there's too many unknowns? You clearly didn't do your research then. And we have kept our daughter extremely healthy. She's had two illnesses in four years. She has been in daycare since she was two months old. Um, she's had one virus and one common cold. That's actually going to come back and bite you in the butt later on in the future. You are protecting your child too much. You're supposed to let your child be exposed to all different forms of pathogens so that she can develop an immune system. I mean, sure, right now it looks pretty good because your daughter hasn't been infected by anything, but overall her immune system is going to be weakened. And when it's time when she has to face a real infection, she won't be able to fight it off. And that infection will be serious and it's not going to be pleasant and may even take your daughter's life. Um, we treated her with herbs and vitamins and um, there were no actual prescriptions available for what she had anyway. There were no prescriptions for her. At this point, Yuri agreed that doctors for allopathic medicines aren't really going to help you, so why did you go see one anyway? Oh, it's not because you actually took your daughter to a proper doctor, you just assumed that there were no prescriptions. You know, I actually hope you tell us what your daughter got so I can actually see if there were really no prescriptions for her. Um, no antibiotics were needed. Um, there were no vaccines for anything that she's ever she's ever gotten in her life. She, she had a simple virus and then she had a cold. And so treating my daughter naturally has proven to work wonders. I would love to know what you are giving your daughter that is making her feel better. Are you giving her acupuncture? Homeopathy? 
foot massages? Why does that woman? She's in daycare with children that are, have colds, have chronic runny noses, they're always sick. Her daycare providers have comment, commented to me on a regular basis that my daughter does not get sick. She's ahead of all the other children scholastically, extremely articulate. They think that she's two years older than she is because of the level of writing and articulation with vocabulary that she has. Extremely smart, bright, and doesn't get ill. Your daughter being smart probably has nothing to do with the vaccinations. You're just jumping to conclusions here without making any premises. You are trying to imply that vaccines make you more stupid, but so far that has just not been going well for you. As for your daughter being healthy, that probably means she has a pretty good immune system that can give a pretty good primary immune response. However, in the future, when she finally contracts a disease that cannot be healed by the primary immune response, you're going to regret this. Everybody else in her school can be sick with a cold and a flu, and she doesn't get it. So interestingly to note as well, as the only two times that she's ever been sick in her life was immediately after Christmas and immediately after Halloween. And on both occasions, she had an extreme amount of sugar and I have learned as well that sugar diminishes your immune system. Your immune system cannot function in an environment of sugar. Yes, yeah, studies have shown that sugar does slightly compromise the immune system function, but this is very, very temporary. There are so many other factors that actually do have a huge impact on your immune system, such as stress. But why aren't you talking about stress? But instead you're talking about sugar, you piece of shit. Your white blood cells actually cease to function. No, they don't cease to function. They just function less well. But this is so minuscule that it's not even worth taking note of. Okay, let me give another explanation. Ascorbic acid, or vitamin C, is absorbed into lymphocytes during times of infection. The acid then aids in many functions of immunity, such as acting as antioxidants and even directly fighting pathogens itself. Essentially, you can think of it as a sidekick to the immune system. Now, when sugar levels are high in the blood, it can be mistakenly absorbed into the lymphocytes in replacement of vitamin C. This can cause minor immunity problems since the lymphocytes aren't getting the proper sidekicks they need. Before you get scared of this, this effect is relatively minuscule and lasts only a short period of time. Insulin gradually brings sugar levels back to normal so your system can then properly fight off the infection. As I mentioned earlier, there are plenty of other factors that could affect your immune system in a negative way, and those are the ones that you actually should be worried about, not sugar. So when you can feed the body a healthy diet, fruits and vegetables, healthy meats if you choose, and stay away from sugars, sodas, um, processed foods, the body stays well. Yeah, I kind of agree. Um, sugar is pretty bad for your body in other ways, not just for your immune system. For example, uh, this is just for my viewers out there, avoid high fructose foods such as high fructose corn syrup. High amounts of fructose will fuck up your liver. Basically, it fucks up your liver the same way alcohol does except you don't get drunk and it's just sugar. So if you want to destroy your liver, why not just grab a beer, am I right? <laughs> You don't need a pill or an injection to stay well. You don't have to be vaccinated to be healthy. True, you don't have to be vaccinated to stay healthy, but in the event that an infection does come up and you get fucked for it, you're gonna wish you got that injection. I mean, come on, that's like saying I shouldn't wear a helmet to ride my bike because I don't need a helmet to ride my bike well. But in the event that you fall off your bike and crack your head open on the sidewalk, you're going to wish you put that helmet on. Vaccines do come with a lot of risk. Our government has acknowledged that. If you read a vaccine insert, you will see it for yourself. No, 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 no. You know what? I would love to see the shit that you've been reading. They come with a lot of risk. And when there is risk, there should be choice. If a parent wants to choose to vaccinate their child because they're more afraid of the diseases than they are of the vaccines, then so be it. I personally am more afraid of the ingredients in the vaccines and the listed side effects and known side effects of the vaccines than I am a case of measles, chicken pox, and polio, which no longer exists in the country. <laughs> Do 
you know why polio no longer exists in the country? It's because of vaccines. If a disease cannot bypass anyone's secondary immune response, it's eventually going to disappear. This is because of herd immunity, which, by the way, you are compromising by being so stupid. There are people who can actually not get vaccines because they are allergic to certain parts of it. They depend on the fact that everyone else is vaccinated so that they themselves won't get infected. If the pathogen has nowhere to spread from, it's not going to get to them. That's how herd immunity works. And people like you, the anti-vaxxers, are compromising our herd immunity that we spent very long building up. This isn't just about yourself anymore, this is about the human population. Next time, do proper research before you appear on some YouTube channel convincing people not to vaccinate.